hit the uh, next slide so you can see these disclaimers. But again, my name is Brian Kahn, and you have access to my email as well as um, the daily forextradingedge.com, which is IBFX's uh, collaboration page where various uh, commentators put together their um, analysis of the markets, and it's a great way to get your fundamental and technical analysis and pick up some uh, great and valuable content. So we'll be talking about proper stop placement. Let me go ahead and lead you to two disclaimers. And again, from this disclaimer, you do not want to be trading or investing with money um, that you are cannot afford to lose. That's the main line there. If you have more questions, you can see the link there. A second disclaimer also about volatile markets. In volatile or fast-moving market conditions, stop and limit orders become market orders to be filled at the prevailing price, which may be vastly, the keyword, vastly different from the desired price. Stop loss or limit orders do not always guarantee a fill, and such orders may not be filled as placed. Substantial losses may still occur. So kind of funny that we have this volatile markets disclaimer up here. It's a very serious um, part of, of trading. And um, right now, from the VIX and the volatility gauge, we don't have really volatile markets, but that can change at any time. And I just want you to be aware that we're going to be talking about stop orders today. And again, there aren't any guarantees that come along with them. They are market orders and they can be filled um, away from where you intended. That's why we trade with trading plans, account risk, trade risk, and we manage things the best we can, but we do not over leverage our accounts in any way. An outline of where we're going tonight, fundamental analysis, we'll do a quick recap from where we were two weeks ago. Technical analysis will basically be in the markets, and then we'll go through three types of trading scenarios, day trading, swing trading, um, and then position trading. And in all of those, we'll do stop placement per our chart analysis, and then we'll do a quick review where I'll give you also a chance to ask questions and also a chance to see some valuable links to get some additional information. And again, as far as questions go, please pop them up at any time. I'll check back and see if I can answer them as they come in in a timely fashion. So fundamental analysis, a quick discussion of current events and what they mean for traders. Obviously, you guys are joining me tonight, and we're talking uh, during the United States dollar, the elections, the presidential elections here, um, and other elections, regional elections, obviously, for um, the Senate and things like that. But obviously, the main one is the presidential election. So aside from that, there's a lot of other data this week going on. So what a great place to take advantage of um, being aware of that would be your broker that's providing information, so webinars like this, but your broker also provides um, links to uh, economic calendars such as Forex Factor, and I'll take you there in just a moment. You also have access to TV and other market sites, internet sites that may be helpful to you. So we're just going to leave this page very quickly, and I'll pause as we go ahead and um, switch the programs, and I just want to take you over to the internet. And again, I'll just pause a moment, and I'll take you to the link that IBFX provides you um, to forexfactory.com. And again, aside from presidential elections, we have lots of economic data going on around the world. Um, but for really, what I want you to concentrate on fundamental analysis is central banks. When they talk, they're talking about interest rate policy, and that can kind of set the tone. So on Thursday, um, just a couple trading days away, we have the ECB press conference as well as a rate statement out of GBP, the Great British Pound. So Bank of England and ECB are speaking. We already had Royal Bank of Australia speak um, uh, on Monday night. We also had, obviously, presidential elections, or we're having those right now. So lots and lots of data, and we want to key in on the big macro data, and that's when central banks are talking. So please be aware of that. Jumping back into the slides. So fundamental analysis, pay attention to the big macro events, pay attention to see if you can get a fundamental edge about what's going on with one currency pair versus the other when these various central banks are talking about their key interest rates. And moving on to technical analysis, so you can kind of get the 
the focus of what I do, I try and go into fundamentals first, the big broad picture, then technical analysis, and I try and pick out some trends, I try and pick out key areas of support, key areas of resistance, and then as you know from my background, I deal a lot with various markets, stock markets, equity markets, uh, futures markets, and then obviously Forex, and trying to relate them all together to get a trading edge and to try and build a trading plan where I see it worth going into the markets, obviously with no guarantees. I may have a winner, I may have a loser, but I'm willing to go into the markets at that time based on my analysis and based on developing a trading plan. So I think that intermarket relationships, understanding what other different markets are doing to help the market that I'm trading, you know, try and get that what we call a trading edge and try and see what can evolve from that trading plan. So trends, support, resistance, and intermarket relationships. I believe that these four key concepts can help you be a, a successful trader um, if you trade with that discipline, if you trade with money management, if you trade with a trading plan, and approach the markets with realistic expectations. That's something that we can talk about when we go into the markets and look at technicals, is we can pay attention to the VIX, we can pay attention to the equity markets. The equity markets have been doing very well. They're going up, the VIX is going down in reaction, so volatility is going down, and trading ranges are down, so trading frequency may be down. That doesn't mean that your trading size is down, that just might mean maybe your trading size is up, but the amount of pips that you might be going for is smaller because the trading ranges are smaller. So as long as you use the fundamentals, the technicals, and your own trading psychology to build a valuable, solid trading plan, then obviously you're going to be willing to go into the markets and manage um, the trades to the best of your ability. And that's basically all that you can ask. All right, so technical analysis, like I said, we'll show these key concepts when we move into the next, uh, the meat of the, um, of the webinar, which is proper stop placement. We're going to talk about day trading analysis first, and this will set the tone, then we'll go into swing, then we'll go into position. So your trading time, where are you around the world and what markets are you trading? Are you trading the Asian market? Are you trading the European market? Are you trading um, the, the American market? Are you trading a blend of both? What fundamentals are going on then? Are you paying attention to the economic calendar? Is the Bank of England speaking? Is the ECB speaking when you're trading? Then you can go into the technicals and say, okay, based on what's going on in the past few days or today, I can now look at the technicals. Am I trending? Am I in range? Am I breaking out of support or resistance? And keep in mind, I mentioned VIX. I'm going to show you that right now. The VIX helps us identify trading ranges. The VIX helps us risk with risk reward. And most importantly, the VIX helps us with stop placement. So I'm going to pause and I'm going to switch the screen over to first um, IBFX's partner site uh, trade station. And we'll move into uh, the charts really quickly. And I'll show you the VIX and the S&P. So I can show you the S&P first, this is the ETF SPY, and this is a yearly chart. So you can see in the beginning of 2012, right here we headed up. In the summer, April and May, we headed down, and then June, July, August, September, we went up. And late September, October, into November, we came off a little bit. But if you do Fibonacci's at all, you can see that we're hanging in very well. We've had a huge move up, okay, and a smallish retracement, 23 38% back down. So the markets are very near their bull run highs. And remember, this is just a yearly snapshot. They went sideways in 2011. They went up in 2010. They went up in 2009. So this is just another good year, 2012, on top of a good year in 2009, in 2010, and then a sideways year in 2011. So in four years, the markets have done nothing but go up or sideways. What has the VIX done in reaction? Remember, the VIX is a volatility gauge, a conviction gauge, um, a volume gauge, and an opportunity gauge. The higher the VIX is, the more movement, the more opportunity there is, the bigger the trading ranges are. Well, look what the VIX has done, and I'll put this on a daily time frame so that you can see it. It's, for the most part, gone down. Stock market's gone up for the past year with a little dip in the summer, and then the VIX has gone down, a little peak in the summer, and then down, 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 down. We talk about support. If any of you are managing portfolios or trying to reduce risk, that's something that I, that I do um, in, in my work um, with portfolios and helping others on a consulting basis, um, but right here, you can see support. What is the VIX doing every time it hits 1330, 1340, 1350, 1360, 1370? We're getting a bounce. We're getting a bounce here. We're getting a bounce right here. We're getting a bounce here. That doesn't mean it's going to bounce again the next time it goes down there. That's why we have stops. That's why we try to manage the trade the best we can, but as I showed you in that disclaimer, there are no guarantees, so trade with the right amount of size for your trading account for that trade, specific trade at that specific time. So now you can see what volatility in the equity markets are doing, and now we can move 
right over to the foreign currency markets. So remember, we're doing this on a day trading aspect. So depends on when you're trading around the world. But if I pull up the pound versus the US dollar today, all right, and obviously we have elections, we have a lot going on. But let's just look at, this is a 15 minute chart. Let's just look what happened in the past 48 hours. Here's the Asian session, Sunday night in America, Monday morning in Asia. Then you have Monday going on. It's Sunday night, Monday in, Amer in the US, but it's the main hours, 7 o'clock GMT time, 8 o'clock GMT, 9 o'clock GMT, 10 o'clock GMT. This is the banking center opening up there in Europe and in Great Britain. And the, the, the range got a lot bigger then. And then all of a sudden, the stock market in the United States when we have a lot of volume going through, when the European markets are closing, the American markets are opening, right here at 1330 is when the U.S. equity markets open. So from 1330 on, we had a 5980 at the top and 5960 at the bottom. We had a 20 pip range. So you say the VIX is down. We have a big event going on tomorrow. This is Monday. So we have a big event tomorrow in the U.S. Tuesday night elections going on right now. So it's a small range. The stock market's not doing much. It's in a small range. So can I expect 30 or 40 or 50 pips as a day trader? No. Maybe I could expect 30 or 40, 50 pips here when the Great British Pound, when they were opening up their banking center. But now it's late in the afternoon and actually the banking center and the equity markets are closed in Europe. So for me to ask for 30 or 40 or 50 pips is unrealistic. Make sure you're building a realistic trading plan. So here, my proper stop placement would be a 5 pip, 8 pip, 10 pip risk to make. 7 pips, 9 pips, 11 pips, 13 pips, because that's what the markets are telling me. Today, Tuesday, leading up to the U.S. elections, the entire day, the entire 24-hour period was 59.70 on the bottom, and let's say 1.60 at the top, so you're talking about 30 pips the entire day. Is it realistic to ask for 60 or 70 pips? Risk 30 pips to make 80? Absolutely not. Is it realistic to risk 7 pips to make 9 pips? Absolutely, based on the charts. So your proper stop placement for today would have been very tight because there's no reason to risk 20 or 30 pips because there wasn't any reason to try and gain 20 or 30 pips on a day like today. All right, so use the markets, use the technicals to tell you what's going on when you're trading. Maybe you're only trading during the Asian session. Well, look what happened in the Asian session last night and look what the, happened with the Asian session um, today, all right? pretty slow for the pound. I'm just looking at the pound, but I want you to get the point of what currency pairs are you trading, and then you can go ahead and look at the range for your currency pairs, okay? So it might be different for every one. If you're trading the Asian session, you might not be trading the pound U.S. dollar. You might be trading the Aussie and the yen and the New Zealand dollar, um, obviously ones that are matching up with that time frame. If you're trading in the European session, you might be trading the U.S. dollar against the euro or against the Swissy, or against the pound, or you might be trading the pound versus the euro, and maybe it has a bigger range. But that's what your job is to do, is to look at the trading range. So that's on a day trading time frame, and for the most part, it's pretty similar when you look across all of the USD denominated pairs. Jumping back into the slides, we're going to do the same thing, swing trading analysis. Again, your trading time, where are you trading, when are you trading, look at the fundamentals, economic calendar, central banks, economic data, look at the technicals, look at the volatility, the trading ranges to make something realistic. So let's move into the charts and show you that. So I'll bring up the euro if we want to take a look at the euro. All right, and let's do swing trading instead of being on a 15 minute chart. Let's look at a 30-minute chart and see what's going on. We could even back it out and look at a larger um, time frame, all right? Maybe something like this. Look at this swing trading now. Now, all of these period separators right here, it's, that's that 24-hour period. That's midnight GMT time. So right here, we have a big range over the past few weeks. Here's, the, here's the, uh, about a month ago. Here's the 14th of September, the 15th of September, 16th, 17th, 18th, going into October and November. So we're looking at almost, you know, about six, seven weeks, something like that. But you can see some swing highs and you can see some swing lows where you might say, hey, right now, looking at where we're at right now, are we down near where there's been support in the past? Could we go lower in the euro? Absolutely, a lot of people are bearish on the euro. They want it to go lower maybe. But in the past, where it's been right here, it's actually bounced and used support. But no guarantees. 
So we always have trading plans. So if you thought that it was going to bounce off of this level, are you willing to risk how many pips? Well, when it bounced off this level in the past, it went from 1.28 even up to, let's say, 1.3050. It went 250 pips, okay? It went from 128 even or 12825 backed up to the 130 level. 12880 back up to 130, you know, uh, around there. So 120 pips. Now we're back down around 12790, just below that support level. If you're going to go for it, you might say, I'm willing to risk 50 or 70 pips because based on past performance, I could get 80 pips, 100 pips, 120 pips. But Past performance doesn't always work. There are no guarantees. We put a stop in. Lo and behold, the markets do drop down, and it gets very fast market. It's the U.S. elections. The ECB just spoke. The Bank of England just spoke, and the markets dropped two, 300 pips. No guarantees that you get out. If you want to risk 50 pips in a fast market, you might not get stopped out until you lost 60 pips, 75 five pips, 80 pips, 90 pips. That's what that volatile um, disclaimer is all about. So there are no guarantees. That's why we don't over leverage our account. That's why we monitor the trades, all right? And we do the best we can. And so if you're trading for days at a time, you may be trading less pips than the day trader who's saying, I'm only trading for the next three or five minutes and I'm trying to make eight or 10 pips. I'm gonna risk five or six pips. They might trade more contracts. You, you're trading less contracts to risk more pips, to make more pips over a longer period of time. And you're aware that this might happen when you're sleeping. You might get stopped out or taken out for a target because you're not in front of the markets all 24 hours that it takes to be in this, or it might take 72 hours or longer for your swing trade to kind of pan out. So in that sense, you got to be willing to risk a little bit less pip-wise because you know that there might be a little bit of what we call maybe slippage or just movement in the markets where we don't get out exactly where we want to. And that can be a good thing also because think about it. If the markets move fast in your way and you wanted to risk 50 pips to make 120 pips and it went really fast your way, you might make 130 pips, you might make 150 pips. So it works both ways. You just have to be aware of that. You can't go, oh, they got me, they, they, they had me lose a little bit more than I, than I wanted to. That's just kind of that reaction. But trust me, it happens on the gain side as well. You just have to account for it, for how many pips you're willing to risk, given how far you think the trade can go, how, how long you're going to be in it. So just keep that in mind. All right, so let's do the same thing now, jumping back in. I just showed you day trading the pound U.S. dollar. I showed you now euro U.S. dollar as far as swing trading. Let's go to a longer-term trader. Maybe there's someone who wants to go ahead and be more of a position trader, and they might want to risk hundreds of pips to make hundreds of pips. So they're trading even a smaller amount of contracts for a longer period of time. What are the fundamentals going on over the next three, eight, 10 days? What are the technicals that you're seeing? Why are you making that trade? And how are you going to manage that trade day to day to day? Because let's face it, if you have a 400 or 500 pip winner and you didn't move your stop, originally you might say, I'm risking 300 pips to make 500 pips. And all of a sudden you have a 400 pip winner and you only have 100 pips more to your gain and you never move your stop. Well, if you're originally risking 300 pips and you have 400 pips of gain, you're now risking 700 pips. So I hope that you're moving your stop towards your break even and 100 pips into the profit zone, 200, 300 pips, because you're managing the trade. I don't care if you're a day trader and you're trying to make seven pips and you have six and a half pips, you better be moving your stop and managing your trade. If you're a swing trader and you're risking 30 to make 60, you better be moving your, your, your stop as it's going so that you can manage the trade, massage the trade as I call it. Same thing in the long-term trading. Hopefully, you're, you're getting a, a chance to glance at the markets and say, hey, I've got 400 out of my 500 pips. I might lighten up. I might go ahead and move my stops, whatever you're going to do. So pay attention to fundamentals, technicals, the VIX, the trading ranges, risk to reward, and proper stop placement. So let's look. We'll go to the, let's say, the Aussie US dollar. I think that's in a pretty big, wide range on a longer time frame. So instead of the hourly chart, let's go to or the four hour chart, let's go out here to a daily chart and just see what's going on with the Aussie dollar. The Aussie dollar as of late, back in August, was up here at 1.60. It topped out there again in mid-September. It bottomed out a few times. Uh, July it bottomed out around 1.0160, 1 so 1.0150, 1.0150 or 60 again in early September early October, 1.0150. So if you just want to draw your horizontal support or resistance line, 
There's your support, and here's your resistance. And so right now, where is it? It's dead in the middle. If I draw a Fibonacci, just because I love Fibonaccis because they help me and tell me where I am in space, I'll go ahead and click on this and get it drawn here. You can see we're dead in the middle, 50%, 61% right in the middle of this top and this bottom. So right now, this might not be a trading entry for you. You might be waiting for it to get up here at 1.06 or down here at 1.01 1 .01 and a half, and then you might say, I'm gonna take it because I think that there's resistance there. Obviously, resistance and support are taking a back seat though, you have to keep in mind, if we get to that resistance or support line and the central bank in, the, in, the, in uh, Australia or the Federal Reserve here in the United States, it's really the Royal Bank of Australia, RBA, the Royal Bank of Australia, if they say something about interest rates, that's why you can't have any guarantees out there. That's why you have to trade with some sense of management and some sense of account risk and trade risk because if they speak right at that level and you said, I'm going to get long or I'm going to get short because of the technicals, and then all of a sudden they say, we're raising or lowering rates, it can move two or 300 pips in a, in a flash and we couldn't, you know, we did the best we can, but those surprises come and that's the thing. Yeah, they're on the docket, and yes, they're on the economic calendar, but this day and age with so much uh, information coming from the central banks, they can pop out of anywhere, and that's why that volatile trading uh, disclaimer is so important because there are no guarantees, and even though you wanted to get out with a 250 pip risk because you were trying to make 700 pips, you know, you had a one to, you know, two, one to three risk to reward ratio, whatever it may be, there are no guarantees. I can't stress that enough. These markets are not volatile. I showed you the, the VIX but it can turn on a dime. And people who are trading these markets and saying, hey, I can trade larger size because it's not really moving. It can turn on a dime and you've got to be able to adapt. Good traders are like chameleons. Chameleons change colors. Good traders need to be adapt to different types of markets. Volatile, not volatile. Economic news affecting the markets. International news such as central bank developments affecting the markets, whatever it may be. Um, we've got to adapt and be able to read the markets at that time. Right now, I think is a time to be throttling back a little bit, not trading as actively as you would in higher VIX markets, but I still think that that's not to say that there's not opportunity out there. I just don't think that this, this frequency of trading is warranted given the volatility out there. So that's just kind of my opinion on it. You can take that for what it's worth, but that's just what the VIX means to me when I'm looking at trading plans. And the VIX also helps me and says, you know what? Today's not a super volatile day. The equity markets are sideways. You use your intermarket relationships. Hey, if you can get eight to 10 pips today, you're, you're, you're doing really well. You can ring the cash register. Don't try and go for an unrealistic expectation, okay? So the question came in, at what point during the trade do you move your stop to break even? It's a very good question. If I'm, if I'm a, and I use the, finance, the Forex markets to do some longer term trading and I use them as a hedge and I have to be careful when I say hedge. I trade a lot of equity markets. I also do some portfolio management and the relationships that I see between the US dollar and equity market movement and commodities and things like that and commodity currencies. So sometimes I use the Forex, Forex markets to reduce risk in the portfolio and there are no free lunches. I could lose money in the portfolio and I might lose money in my hedge as well. Um, you know, there's no guarantees out there. I also use the Forex markets as a scalper and kind of a swing trading in shorter term time frame. And so it just depends on what's going on in the flow. If I risk eight, eight pips to make 13 pips on a really short term trade and I've got in this low volatile market 10 or 11 pips and it's kind of getting late in my trading day and I don't believe that there's going to be a lot more activity and I might just want to book that winner and say, yeah, I wanted 13 pips. I've got eight, nine, 10. I might start moving my stop up pretty quickly or taking some off and legging out and peeling some off. If I put on 10 contracts, I might take off six you know, or seven as it's going my way and moving my stop at the same point time because I might not get another trade that day. That's kind of what the markets are is as you can see in a 20 or 30 pip range in a five to six hour time frame. I'm not expecting to get a ton of trades off. So if I get a winner, I might kind of just cut it short and say, hey, nice job, pat myself on the back and, and go ahead and um, take it off the table, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to you. So again, it depends if it's a 200 pip winner and I was risking 100 pips to make 200 pips and I've got 100 pips, 150 pips my way, yeah, I'm probably starting to move it well past the break even just because, you know, that's a nice trade and you just got to, you know, there's nothing wrong with ringing the cash register and managing it. Because if you're risking 100 pips and you've got 150 pips of gain, 
now you're risking 250 pips if you don't move your stop 50 pips you know closer to break even at the break even 25 pips in the profit 35 pips in the profit 50 pips in the profit and I'm using technical analysis and fundamental analysis along the way I'm updating kind of my analysis based on what I'm seeing what I'm hearing what I'm observing from the charts okay so good question there so hopefully that helps you I'm constantly massaging the trade that's what I call it is I, I you know I don't my day trades I don't leave I don't leave when I have one on because eight or ten pips, as you know, can happen in the blink of the eye. So I'm not going to the bathroom in the middle of that trade. Swing trading, you know, where you're risking 20 pips or 30 pips to make 50 or 80 pips, or position trading where it's longer. Yeah, obviously I'm willing to go to bed. I'm not going to stay up for three or four days straight. I'm willing to go to bed, but I've kind of planned and said, hey, I'm expecting this to happen. I could get stopped out here. I might moving it to a trailing stop. You know, every trade whether it's a long-term trade or a short-term trade. Every trade is its own separate entity, and I'm doing the best I can to manage that entity right then and there. All right? So jumping back into the slides to wrap up, we went over some fundamental events. Keep your eye on that economic calendar and those central banks. Uh, keep your eye on the uh, economic data coming out of each you know, area that you're trading, each different uh, region and different Forex pair. Technical analysis, I looked at three different pairs for you. I also gave you some intermarket relationships as far as what the volatility gauge in VIX is doing and the equity markets are doing as well. And then we went through a day, a swing, and a position analysis as far as how many pips should be appropriate to risk for that you know, trading analysis. Obviously, the day trader is going to be risking maybe 5, 8, 10, 15, 20 pips. The swing trader might be risking 20, 40, 50, 60, 70 pips. And a position trader could be risking 80 pips, 100 pips, 200 pips, 300 pips, depending on the pair that they're trading and the, and the period of volatility that they're dealing with. So stop placement, again, no guarantees, but we're using the charts to say this makes sense to at least start my stop placement in this area. All right? So let me just check back if there's any questions, and then I'll move on to, or I'll just get this next slide up there while I answer the questions. So the next webinar is going to be in about two weeks. Same thing, a fundamental analysis catch-up or update, technical analysis, looking at trends, support, and resistance. And then we're going to review those current intermarket relationships. And the main topic are going to be the markets post-U.S. election. So obviously, we'll find out tonight in the next few hours who will be the president for the next four years in the United States. We'll let the market shake out for a couple weeks, and then we'll see what are the equity markets doing, what's volatility doing, did it pick up a little bit, what, is, what are the Forex ranges doing, what are some opportunities that we can look for there going forward. So that'll be the next one, the markets post-U.S. elections. Other ways to stay involved and on top of the markets, you can reach out to me if you have questions. Um, there's my email. Again, as I said, IBFX is providing some great education, so go to their site get in touch with them if you have questions on their education uh, platform. I post almost daily market commentary on fundamental and technical analysis and charts at their daily forextradingedge.com website. And then also this webinar should be posted soon to that IBFX uh, YouTube page, but there's almost three dozen um, videos up there that I've done on fundamental analysis, technical analysis, trading psychology, intermarket relationships, um, all different topics you can find there that I've done and that obviously some of the other collaborators have done as well. So look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Again, let me just see if I can wrap up with uh, any questions here and then uh, I will try and get another market commentary post for you guys tomorrow as we wrap up with these elections. So someone was just asking, they said they're new to Forex, I think, and they said uh, talking about trading during an economic release. Um, some people choose to trade ahead of economic releases. Some people cho choose to trade as it's happening, you know, as they get the news, and some people choose to wait. All depends on what type of trade you are and what you're looking for, obviously. If you're going to compete with that volatile period, there's that volatile disclaimer right there. In a very fast market, there's no guarantees of where you get in and where you get out. So again, it just depends on what you're trying to achieve. But there's nothing wrong with trading it. You just have to understand the risk associated. I like to react, so I like to get that news. It tells me what's going on, and then I like to go ahead and trade after it. I did trade during it, basically, or sometimes into it for about eight years in the bond futures markets, and I just think that computers have changed the game, game gray boxes and black boxes, and they can get their orders in faster than a human mind saying, oh, I heard the economic release. 
that's bullish or bearish to me, I'm going to buy or sell this pair. You're too long by the time you've done your, that thought process. So just keep that in mind of who you're competing with during that data. Okay. Um, and then another question, how do you know how big to make your stop size? Well, that's what I just did. That's what this entire webinar was about. Use the technical analysis, use the trading ranges to tell you what's realistic. If I'm looking at a four hour period of a 20 pip range, I can't go and risk 50 pips to make 100 at that time. I can only risk eight or 10 pips to make 10, 11, 12, 13 pips in that 20 pip range. So go back and review this webinar because this entire webinar was about, depending on if you're a day or a swing or a position trader, look at the charts. The charts are telling me what's realistic to have risk reward and obviously no guarantees, but in a normal market, I should get out for my stop or my gain somewhere close you know, or, or at you know, that location. If it's a fast market, there might be a little bit of discrepancy or variance there. Okay, So go back and, and, and review this. This entire webinar went through three specific periods, day, swing, and position. And looking at those three charts, I only looked at three charts, you have to look at the Forex pairs you're looking at in a trading time frame where you're trading in the American session, the European session, the Asian session, and you have to see what's realistic given that time frame. So there's all of the uh, information, how to get a hold of me if you have questions, and obviously how to read my commentary and the other great commentary posted by IBFX collaborators. So happy trading, invest intelligently, and I'll look forward to seeing you in two weeks.